and he says to the angel that he wishes he'd never been born and the angel shows him what life would be like if he hadn't been born. But in fact, that's only the last 20 minutes of the film. The previous two hours have been this man's life. And in fact, the nature of that life has been one of resentment at being stuck in this small town. I just feel like if I didn't get away, I'd bust. He agrees to work there for four years while his brother goes off to college. And then when his brother comes back, George is going to go off and see the world, basically. There she blows. His brother turns up with a girl who he has just married. And in the ensuing conversation, the girl lets slip that her father has offered George's brother a great job. And suddenly Stuart realizes that in order to let his brother have this job, he's going to have to stay. Um, and it's done just, she just says the line, plop, they all wander off. And he stands there, and you can see his, his confusion, really, at what's happened. And the camera pans across with him as he walks through, and he comes very close. He, just by his face and gesture, is able to convey a very common but very vivid sense of disappointment, which is something that's not that I think it's really hard to play. Just in that little pan across, you get this real sense of, oh, God, this is, what the hell am I going to do? This is miserable, you know? And if you can't talk, it's stupid talking about it and articulating it in words because it's not a words thing, it's a visual thing, and it works really, really well. Oh, how do you do? Ruth Dakin. Ruth Dakin Bailey, if you don't mind. Oh, that's right. Well, I wired you, I had a surprise. Here she is, meet the wife. What do you do? Wife. Uh, <laughs> how do you do? Oh, congratulations. How do you do? What am I doing? Congratulations. How are you? Why don't you tell oh, somebody? Oh, yeah. I can't wait Nobody to see tells me anything. Anything. Oh, You really married? Like you. Hey, what, what's a pretty girl like you doing marrying this two-headed brother of mine? Well, I'll tell you, it's purely mercenary. My father offered him a job. Oh, we got you and the job. Well, Harry's cup run is over. Uh, George, about that job, Bruce spoke out of turn. I never said I'd take it. You've been holding the bag here for four years, and well, I won't let you down, George. I would like to. T well, wait, wait a minute. I forgot the bags. I'll be right back. Surprise to me. This is a new Mrs. Bailey, my nephew. Oh, friends of the Bailey. Let's call in here now. We're taking our home. And I want to tell you that we're going to give the biggest party this town ever saw. George, George, George. That's all Harry ever talks about. Ruth, that's, uh, what about the job? Oh, well, my father owns a glass factory in Buffalo. He wants to get Harry started in the research business. Yeah. Well, is it a good job? Oh, yes, very. Not much money, but a uh, good future, you know. Yeah. Harry's a genius at research. Mm -hmm. My father just fell in love with him. You did, too. 